Now that you understand the basics of the puppet tool, let's go ahead and add some puppet pins and I'm going to show you how we can actually record movement, which is a really cool way in which you can animate and make a bunch of sophisticated animations really quickly. We'll start off by using our puppet tool and this time I'm going to use some of my advanced puppet pin tools on a couple of the various elements. So I'm going to click on my head to create an advanced and you can see that my mesh is super big. The expansion somehow got increased in a very large amount so let me just decrease this down to something more like 10 which is going to bring it in and I'm also going to reduce the density down. Let's just make that eight. When we have less of a density, you can see that the mesh is not quite as dense. And how this is going to affect the elements is you won't get such precision on the various elements when you make modifications to them. We can always adjust this later, but I'm just gonna leave this as my starting point. If you wanna create animation using any of the puppet tools, you need more than one puppet point because if I just try to modify this now, you can see how my entire element is moving. We wanna be able to add the puppet points. I'm going to add the advanced puppet tool on the head. Then I'll use the puppet position tool on my neck and I'm gonna put one in the middle of the body. I'm gonna come back and get my advanced puppet tool and I'm gonna add a advanced puppet pin to the tail and then we'll go back to the regular puppet position tool and we're just going to set up the settings on our legs. Now I have my character kind of rigged up. Once again, I'm going to select the various elements and just give them names so that I can stay organized. So I'll just do that quickly. I'm gonna select the name and hit return and then I'll just type in the name. Let's just drag the timeline up so we have a little bit more room to see all of the various elements that we're going to be animating. In addition to setting the points that I have right here, I'm going to go back to the puppet tool and we're going to add our overlap pin tool. We're just going to add that to the head. So I'll click right there. I'll adjust the position of this pin slightly. And in addition, we can always adjust the extent um, to extend around the head, but I just want to make sure if the beak comes down, it stays in front of everything else. So now I feel pretty ready to animate. We're going to place our playback head at the beginning of our composition. And what we'll do is we'll switch back to our puppet tool. And we're going to have the character kind of look at us. So I'm going to be animating the head and the tail. I'll go into both head and tail and we're just going to make sure keyframing is on for the advanced pin types. Then I'm going to move my playback head out about eight frames. We're going to select on the advanced pin and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab scaling and we're going to increase the scaling up so that it looks like our flamingo is looking and coming a little closer to us. And then I'm going to grab the tail and we're gonna grab the scaling down a little bit so that the rear area of the flamingo is going to scale down. So that's just gonna be like a quick And then we want this just to go back to its original settings. So I will select the keyframes for the tail and copy those. I'm gonna move out to about 16 frames and paste in, and I'll do the same thing for the head. All right, so the flamingo is just gonna kind of like give us a little bit of a look and then go back to its original position. And when it goes back to its original position, we're going to initiate a kind of dance type of cycle. So we will use the record feature to do this. And because I wanna record most of the Flamingo, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select the various parts of the Flamingo. Basically, we're going to select all of the pins except for the ankle pins. So everything else is selected. When we want to record, you can go to record options and this will open up the puppet record option dialog box where you can dial in the various settings. The speed controls the ratio of the speed of the recorded motion. 
to the speed of the playback. If the speed is set to 100%, the motion is played back at the speed at which it was recorded. If we increase this value above 100%, the motion gets played back slower than it was recorded. And if we decrease it, then it speeds up the motion. So if you feel like you need more time to be able to position and control your element, you might want to adjust this down, but I'm going to leave it at 100%. Smoothing will allow you to remove extra keyframes from your animation. After Effects is basically going to be creating motion path as we drag around. And if we have this number higher, we'll end up with less keyframes. I am going to leave this at zero. I prefer to record with a bunch of keyframes and then we can always go back later and remove them. I just find that that gives me a little bit more control over my elements. But if you know that you don't need a keyframe at every single frame, you can increase the smoothing and that will prevent that from happening. The use draft deformation, it controls the distorted outline that's shown during recording and it does not include any sort of starch pins, which we don't have any starch pins, but it can improve the performance if you have a really complex mesh. I tend to turn off show mesh because I feel like it just is a little bit of a resource drain. So I'm going to click OK. And before I do that, you can see that it lets me know that I need to hold down my command key. I'm on a Mac. It would be a control key on a PC while dragging the puppet pin to record the animation. So once we have the pin selected, we're going to hold down our command key and you'll see that my playback head turns to a little bit of a stopwatch. And actually, let's have our animation start maybe at frame 20. Position my playback head where I want the animation to start hold down command or control. And then as soon as I click my mouse down, it's going to be recording my actions. So we're just gonna kind of make our flamingo dance. And then I just let go. And you can see we get a ton of keyframes that are laid down. If we go ahead and play our animation, it might take just a minute to RAM preview, but as soon as that's done, you can see that we get a pretty complex animation and we literally were able to create it very very quickly in this way you can really get creative and of course you can always go in and augment any of these if we decide that some of these animation settings are just a little too much we would need to go into the various pins and if we select the pin for instance for the rear knee we can open up our smoother to access the smoother. You would go to window and we would want to open the smoother. And once we have the smoother open, we can increase the tolerance. I'm going to just click away and select the position for rear knee. And then I'll increase the tolerance to 15 and I'll click apply. And you can see that it reduces the number of keyframes. So if we play through the animation is going to be similar, but since we don't have quite as many keyframes, we're going to have After Effects creating more tweens rather than doing more of a frame by frame type of animation. And obviously you can adjust this as needed for my rear hip. I might go into the smoother and decide that I want the smoothing tolerance to maybe be 12 and apply that. And it will reduce the number of keyframes based on whatever setting you specify. Unfortunately, there is not a way to do this for all of the layers at once. If you do know that you aren't going to need so many frames, then when you record, set your record options so that your smoothing is set to something that's going to be a little bit more appropriate for your particular needs. When I get to the tail, because I was only recording position, I don't need to do any sort of smoothing on scale and rotation. I'll just go in and I'll continue to adjust the smoothing on these various settings. We're almost done right here, which is going to reduce the number of keyframes significantly. If we play the animation now, you're going to see that we still get movement and it works really well, but we've just reduced that down. If you want to go in and fine tune any of the keyframes, then clearly being able to have access to these keyframes is going to be extremely important. Let's say right here, 
I wanted my head to dip down a little bit, I could go ahead and I could dip it down and you can just kind of come in and, and make any sort of changes uniquely for every particular pin that you have within your animation. It also is worth mentioning that you can record on just a few pins. It doesn't have to be everything. If you had a character and maybe you just wanted to have the arm waving frantically, you could just create pins along the arm and then record the wave a bunch of times instead of placing those keyframes uniquely. Being able to use the sketching motion with the puppet pin tool allows you to deform the pins in real time and you can really create an interesting sort of animation very, very quickly using this particular technique.